Hello and welcome everyone. I'm sure anyone who has played previous EU4 patches would know about the Burgundian Inheritance. It was an RNG dependent event chain where you could get a lot of high development provinces for free. I actually got a lot of questions on YouTube here about how to get Burgundian Inheritance as France or Austria. You had to attack Burgundy, wait for their ruler to die, then full siege them and wait till RNG ticks in your favor. Which wasn't a reasonable strategy, basically Burgundian Inheritance was pure RNG. In the new 1.30 patch, Burgundian Inheritance has been completely overhauled. Now there are multiple event chains which you can affect as a player. The RNG factor is still there, obviously, but playing as Burgundy is a lot more rewarding and fun. So let's look at the new and improved Burgundian Inheritance from the point of view of Burgundy as a player first. The first event you will get is the Murray of Burgundy event. This has a few trigger conditions. It needs to be at least 1457 and Burgundy doesn't have an heir or the heir is less than 15 years old and the ruler is Charles de Bourgogne who is at least 43 years old. This event gives two options. First is to take Murray as an heir. Murray will always have the same stats of 453, 816 with strong claim and you cannot disinherit this heir. The second option gives 20 legitimacy and the Burgundian inheritance doesn't progress. So obviously you should take Murray as an heir. This leads to the second event in this chain. When the ruler dies and Murray succeeds to the throne, you can use your ruler as a general to increase his chances of dying. And this will fire the Burgundian succession event and it gives three options. First one is come what may Burgundy will remain Burgundian. This may lead to a war with France and the emperor may demand the lowlands. This means we remain independent and we get to see two more event chains after this and fight France for a bit. Second option is the one Habsburg prince will do nicely. With this one we fall under a PU with Austria. And third option is let us reintegrate with the French where we fall under PU with France. Let's start with the first option and we'll come back to the other two in a bit. When taking the first option, get your armies ready, hire a mark company and get Austria or any other major power as an ally. Because it's very very likely that France will immediately attack you with restoration of Union CB. But since France is the aggressor, our allies will help us out and the war isn't really that hard. They do start with a couple of provinces sieged down, including a fort which is a bit annoying. During this war, the other event chain will fire, Emperor demands lowlands. When we choose the first option in the previous event, it also fired an Imperial Incident. Imperial Incidents are also a new mechanic in game now. With the Imperial Incidents, the Emperor can affect a lot of change in and around HRE and the HRE members get to vote in it. It is very likely that the Emperor will demand the Lowlands in this incident. When that happens, we get an event that also gives us three options. First one is we do not bow to the Emperor. This will lead to Austria supporting independence of Holland. Second option is grant the great privilege. This one will enable a new privilege for the bourgeoisie state. This privilege gives 50% minimum autonomy in all provinces in the lowlands. We also get some money up front and we cannot revoke the privilege for 20 years. Taking this option will also lead to instant inheritance of all three PUs which is a really good deal because having small nations as PUs isn't really helpful. They don't contribute to the income and they don't give any more force limit unlike regular vassals. So instead of waiting 50 years and then spending diplo points to integrate them, we get to inherit all three PUs instantly with one click. This is a very good deal. The third option is abandon the lowlands where all three PUs become independent which is obviously a terrible choice and you should never take it. Also important to note here, if we do take the first choice, Austria really can't support our subject's independence if we are allied to Austria. So you can choose that option if you want. I think option 2 here is the best way forward. Once we are done with the French war, we can complete a mission, secure the succession. This will trigger two events. One of them is the imperial entrance which gives us two options. First one where we will ask the emperor to join the HRE. Choosing this option will trigger another imperial incident. The second option, let them laugh, Burgundy shall remain Burgundy, won't do anything, so I suggest picking the first option here. Now the HRE princess will vote on the incident again and what the emperor does will depend on their opinion of Burgundy. And if the emperor likes us, they will let us into the HRE. You can see that at the bottom of this tooltip, it says emperor favors this option. So after a year, you are in the HRE and now you can play the usual HRE game, improve relations with electors. And once you have a male ruler, you can push to become the emperor and do the usual HRE shenanigans. This is a very easy way to become the emperor and go towards the HRE vassal swarm and take over the world. 
But there's an even better option, and that happens when the Emperor doesn't let you in HRE. For this to happen, you will have to break the Austrian alliance, insult them, and get as many negative relations modifier you can get. So it's important that we don't click on the mission just yet. Wait a few years, and if possible, even rival Austria. I haven't found a concrete opinion cutoff for when the Emperor won't let you in the HRE, but it seems closer to minus 150 relations. At that point, you can click the mission and ask the Emperor to let us join the HRE, and this time, most likely, the Emperor is going to favor ban their entry decision. This will trigger another event, the Emperor refuses, he's the Emperor only name, and this gives us subjugation CB on every elector. We get Restoration of Union CB, that's PU CB on every elector that's a monarchy, and we get a Subjugation CB, that's Vassalization CB on every non-monarchy elector. This is super OP in my opinion. Yes, getting all those electors as subjects isn't easy, but the CB lasts for 50 years, so we got a lot of time to wait for the A to cool down a bit. And you only need 4 electors as subjects to become the Emperor basically forever. So just like the previous option where the Emperor lets you in the HRE, you can become the Emperor and play the HRE game. And now you also get a lot of free land with subjects. Eventually though, you will want to release the vassal electors as there's Imperial Authority penalty for that, but PUs don't count towards that penalty so you can just keep your Emperorship no matter what. Then just go HRE vassal swarm or just form the HRE with their fantastic new idea set. And that is the best sequence of events you can get in my opinion. Getting back to our original Burgundian succession event, if we choose the second option to become a subject of Austria, we will inherit all our subjects instantly, which is pretty good in my opinion. Then you can ask Austria's rival to support independence and immediately declare the independence war. This war isn't that hard either. With the third option, we will become a PU subject of France. We will inherit all our PU subjects instantly, but our vassal never become a vassal of France. France with this option. Now we can do the same thing, ask France's rival to support independence and declare the independence war immediately. Either of those options aren't bad actually, and you can definitely do it if you want. The only downside is that taking these options doesn't end the Burgundian succession crisis right now, and so you cannot complete the mission and go on to the next event chain. This might be an oversight by the devs and it might change in a future patch, or you will just have to wait till 1500. When playing as France, there isn't a lot you can do to force Burgundian inheritance. If it does fire though, depending on what AI chooses, we could get a Defiant Burgundy, where we get a Restoration of Union CB and we can force PU on them. Once we win that war, we get all their PUs as well. However, as France starts at max Diplo relation limit now, this will put us well over the Diplo limit. If the AI takes the option to become our subjects, then we just get the PU or Burgundy for free. And if the AI takes the option to become Austria subjects, then we just get Nevers as a vassal. There is a rare event that can fire where the ruler Murray dies and we get to instantly inherit Burgundy. This is obviously RNG dependent and a fantastic event. When playing as the Emperor, if AI Burgundy chooses to remain independent, we get an Imperial incident about Emperor demands the lowland that we saw earlier. And we'll talk about the Imperial incidents and how they work in a future video. If the AI Burgundy chooses to become Austria subject, we get an Imperial incident as well, where we choose between keep our union with Burgundy, which will very likely mean a war against France, we can make concessions to France, where every province in France region owned by Burgundy will be ceded to France, and a third option of integrating Burgundy into the Empire. This will release all tax in the lowland and add them to the Empire, so we will get even more Imperial authority. And this third option is clearly the way to go when you're playing an HRE game. Now if AI Burgundy chooses to become France's subject, we also get an Imperial incident with three options. We can demand lowland independence, we can press our claim on Burgundy where we declare war on them with restoration of Union CB, or we can just abandon the claim. I would definitely go here with option 2. And when playing as France, we will also see all these Imperial incidents depending on what AI Austria chooses. So that was the whole Burgundian Succession Crisis event chain along with two Imperial incidents associated with it. I love the new event changes, and I really like how dynamic they are and how much a player can actually affect them. And I'm super intrigued to see how all this plays out in a good multiplayer game. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment. I always love hearing from you all. You're watching a Radio's Guide. Thank you for your time and I'll see you all in the next one.